If you are a developer of any kind, there's a good chance that you use Visual Studio Code. And Visual Studio Code is great. It comes out of the box, not too complex and overwhelming like some IDEs. And because of its popularity, there's extensions for basically any use case you can think of. And for the most part, also super easy to get set up for whatever programming language you need it to work for. And that is why for by far the majority of my programming career, this has been my text editor slash IDE of choice whenever I needed to accomplish anything. But this got challenged a little bit in the last year or so. So for a bit of context, in my day job, I work as a developer on autonomous driving cars. And autonomous cars, like many other distributed systems, can be very complex to work in, as you have multiple computers connected, maybe also infrastructure, and so on. So to make a long story short, I encountered situations where no amount of SSH or dev container extensions would make me able to work with VS Code without it being a headless environment, meaning purely in a terminal. So because of this, I realized that I had to learn some kind of terminal-based text editor. Of course, if you're just editing a single line and it needs to go very quick, you can just use something like Nano, it's built in, it's fast. But in my case, I often had to sit and work on stuff for multiple hours at a time, and I would rather stop my toe really badly than work for an extended period of time in an editor without intelligence. <laughs> so, I needed to learn a proper editor. And where do we start with that? Well, where everyone <laughs> seems to go in the end, Vim. <laughs> now, don't worry, I'll get to Helix in a second. <laughs> I had actually already at this point been looking at Vim for a long time and especially been very interested in Vim Motions. For those of you that don't know, Vim Motions is effectively a different way of navigating and manipulating your texts. So instead of using your arrow keys, for example, you use HJKL. And instead of just always being in type mode, you have multiple modes. So a normal mode where you can do text manipulation and an insert mode where you text like normal. Now for this video, I don't want to go too much in detail about this, but what you do need to know is the fact that when you get used to these motions, you are able to become significantly faster at texting and editing than you were able to do using regular navigation, and it's significantly more ergonomic for your hands as well. However, actually getting Vim installed and set up and everything just was a little bit too scary for me. <laughs> Every guide I seem to find just looked super complex. And <laughs> if you were to do anything manually, it just became a lot of work. So I held off on doing it for a long time. <laughs> I did manage to find some pre-configured versions like AstroVim or NVChat that I played a bit around with. And while it mostly was not too difficult to install and looked really great, I did run into weird kinds of issues that, due to my lack of experience, I was just not able to diagnose or deal with myself. But on top of that, a sort of interesting thing I realized is that the Vim motions don't work particularly well with a Danish keyboard. I tend to use a Danish layout, as in my everyday life, I need to both write in Danish, German and English. And the Danish keyboard is simply the easiest way of doing so. I have considered on multiple occasions just trying an American layout. And believe me, <laughs> I'm a person who are very, is very open to experiment with keyboard changes. That's a whole different kind of video. But this is something that is not really super easy to change at the current point in time. So while Astro Vim, Vim, NVim all seem quite great, at the time, I was not really feeling comfortable with it and decided to forego it. I do think one day I'll return. Maybe trying to make my own config would be quite interesting, but that will not be right now. <laughs> this is when I came across Helix. Helix is a Vim-like text editor written in Rust, but it comes with batteries included, meaning getting the majority of features that I want just came in the binary itself. Easy way to set up IntelliSense, easy navigation, easy instructions on what I can do, all built in. 
Downloading Helix was also really easy, as I am on PubOS, so I can use the apt package manager. It's only three lines, and it was installed and just worked out of the box. Very little configuration needed. Once I got Helix running, I had to get used to their version of motions called Helix motions. Helix motions and Vim motions are in concept very similar, but with some differences. So they both have these multiple modes and use HJKL to move. But for example, in Vim, you would do on your keyboard, you would do D for delete, and then you would select word with W. In Helix, you do the opposite. So you select first your word with V and then you click D for deleting. And while I have seen some different discussions on the difficulty of transitioning between Vim and Helix, I come from the Visual Studio Code path and never learned Vim motions. So adapting to these was significantly easier to an extent, I think, um, than the other way around. <laughs> that being said though, not entirely easy. <laughs> Especially getting used to HJKL took a number of tries, but I feel like Helix's keybind comes across quite naturally, and you get used to them over time. So, for example, to go to the beginning of the line or the end of the line, you can click G for go to, then H is normally left, so go to left, you move all the way to the left, and the same for the right. If you want to go to the end of the document, you can click G for go to and E for end. And always, if you're unsure of a keybind, you can just click space. You will see a bunch of them. And you can even click question mark and search for whatever you need. But for the most part, I found it quite intuitive while still taking definitely a few hours or a few days to kind of get comfortable with. However, once I did get comfortable with Helix Motions, I saw my speed of typing and coding significantly increase. I was able to navigate at a speed I've never been able to before. And now, if I go back to just pure regular VS Code, it feels super slow. So even when I use VS Code, I use the Helix extension, which even though it isn't perfect, <laughs> I definitely find better than just regular navigation. The only thing I kind of still had to learn with Helix was the fact that you need to install whatever programming languages LSP you need manually. And this also probably kind of makes sense. You cannot really get around this. And for most languages, this was quite easy, like Python, literally just this one line, <laughs> you're, you're done. Uh, but for some other languages, it was a little bit more difficult. Rust uh, took me a few tries to figure out that I needed to use this command. But afterwards, it worked perfectly fine, got to take it automatically. Very little fuss. <laughs> and I really like the way Helix handles configs. They have a single config file that you can edit, and it's very easy. You can just set your theme, you can add hotkeys. It's quite intuitive, especially if you have the documentation ready. And because of this, and because of the work environment I have, Helix has basically been my main editor for the last year. Now, as said earlier, coming from VS Code, it still took definitely a few days to get used to, and I had to force myself a bit, especially in the beginning, to keep using the motions until I felt happy with them. But at this point, it's by far the most productive I've ever been coding when I do my coding in Helix. That being said, is it perfect? No, of course not. And there are some things I miss from VS Code. While plugins are being worked for for Helix, it is not in there at the current point in time, meaning that the way Helix is configured now is just how it is, and you cannot really modify it unless you modify the version itself or fork it, which a lot of people have done. For example, Evil Helix, which is a fork of Helix that enables Vim motions in the Helix editor, if you still prefer to use those. However, for me, the thing that I'm really missing is a VS Code-like file browser. There exists already a file browser, got integrated some months ago into Helix, but it doesn't currently work in the way that I would like. I would like it to be on the side for some reason. I feel like that gives me a better overview <laughs> of my files and I want them to be highlighted different colors based on errors or it's committed or not. I have already tried to see if I could find some fork or something other people have made to fix this, but currently I've not been able to find one that I was satisfied with. 
However, don't interpret this as a criticism of Helix. Helix at the current point in time doesn't have plugins and you will never be able to satisfy everyone. I like it one way, someone else likes it another way. They are creating a framework which is a great starting point. Once plugins comes, I hope that there is one that can fix this for specifically my needs. But in general, the GitHub is seeing a lot of activities and is being worked on. And I really applaud the effort done by the creators. It's an amazing piece of work. Ironically, the only real problem that I'm encountering with being a regular Helix user is the fact that it's so new. <laughs> so most other software does not support Helix Motions. <laughs> Since I've now gotten so used to using Helix Motions, I would like to use them where else I can. So for example, I use Obsidian for note taking and I use a lot of time writing in Obsidian. But there's not really support for Helix. There's support for Vim built directly into it, but Helix Motions no. I was able to find a not official plugin that enables Helix Motions, but that is still clearly very much in development and doesn't work perfectly yet. Same kind of goes for Visual Studio Code. There exist plugins that I've been using, but they are definitely also not perfect. <laughs> that being said, I can see now that the set IDE has Helix built in by default now, so maybe this is becoming more of a thing. Who knows? <laughs> Although, because of this, I might give like Vim motions another try, maybe either using Evil Helix or trying again <laughs> new Vim config at some point when I feel a bit more brave. <laughs> but for now, I am super satisfied with Helix and I'll continue to use both VS Code and Helix, both using Helix motions going forward, depending on what work I do and what I feel like. <laughs> but I think that was everything I had to say about my experience of using Helix so far. If you have ever tried using Helix or have any thoughts on this, feel free to share it in the comments. Would love to read it. Otherwise, 